I am Patricia Di Sarno and I'm the owner of Made in Brazil Cleaning. Uh, I'm from Brazil, born and raised in Rio de Janeiro. I moved to Wilmington about 17 years ago, but I've been in America for about 30 years. Came to America with $100 in my pocket and I thought it was a lot of money. And I found out it wasn't. Back home, I just uh, I, I was in law school and I was gonna be a lawyer, like my mom. And I realized that wasn't for me. So I decided to just leave. And I, I left school and I left the country at 22. My name is Eric Rabinovich. I'm a business banking officer with the Inclusive Business Banking Team. And my job is to connect with minority-owned, women-owned, and veteran-owned small businesses across the country. Pandemic hit us and I thought we were going down. I thought this is the end of Made in Brazil. We're gonna shut down and that's it. We're never gonna clean people's houses anymore. And um, everybody's just going to be locked up in their house. And it was the opposite. People in the house, they needed more of us. And I had to acquire more girls, more cars. Welcome to the fleet of Made in Brazil. And growing. A couple years ago, one of my clients sent me a text. She said, hey, if you're looking to expand your business, how about you check into Live Oak? I work with Live Oak. Oh, I didn't know you work with Live Oak, but thank you, uh, I'm not looking to expand right now. That was my answer to her. But the truth was, I didn't think I could get help. So when Trish approached the bank and we got put in touch with her, at the time she was looking to purchase a building that had recently come on the market and she was dealing with a good problem. She was growing and didn't have enough access to washing machines. She was actually using her home washer and dryer to go through all the different towels and linens that she was cleaning for her customers, her, her business's customers. And I'm almost approved when he decided, they decided to run my credit. And 20 years ago, I had a bankruptcy. And that was it. Like, ah, we can't help you because of that bankruptcy. But that was 20 years ago. Well, still in your credit. We can see it. Like, well, nobody else can see it. Well, we can see it. Okay. But remember I told you, I know someone who can help you. If we weren't going to be able to help her, I was going to do everything in my power to help her get connected with a trusted partner who could help her because I really had full faith in her, in, in, in her ability and her uh, you know, leadership and just what she's been able to grow. My name is Reggie Jones. I'm the uh, Business Solutions Director with Carolina Small Business Development Fund. So Carolina Small Business Development Fund is a CDFI and we are a community-based organization and we provide uh, access to capital. We provide uh, technical assistance and policy research for small businesses. So the partnership between Live Oak and Carolina Small Business Development Fund is essentially we meet once per month. Uh, I would also add if there's opportunities that come up where we think it might be a good match, we'll have ad hoc discussions with uh, with Reggie and with Mark. So we kind of talk through those deals, you know, where they're having difficulty um, and try to figure out if it might be a right fit for us. And on top of that, I would add that the technical assistance that Carolina Small Business Development Fund is able to provide is a really critical component here because a lot of the customers we're working with are early stage companies can benefit from that type of help and for them to really have that sort, sort of support and access to that kind of expertise at their fingertips puts them on a position to, in a position to succeed. Eric will you know, reach out to the customer to see if they're amenable to speaking with Carolina Small Business. And he kept saying, hang in there, hang in there. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So even when my hopes were going down, hang in there. It, it took a little bit of maneuvering to get everything in alignment. Um, I think uh, you know we had to take extra steps, uh, uh, and we didn't have a lot of time. So I think that was the biggest issue that we faced. Because then Reggie is saying, the way I I, I can tell Trish, when I talk to you in two years, you're going to have this almost paid off. Uh, we want to rewrite the script from. Being able to, I think a lot of banks now, they say no and good luck if they can't support a, a, an applicant at this point in time. We want to be able to say no but and 
Live Oak is just one stop of what could be potentially many different options as they go through their journey in terms of accessing capital. So the building was important. It's a standing alone building and I can put as many machines as I want. I can park as many cars as I want. I don't have anybody around me. I don't have neighbors that I have to share parking space. It was a great building, great location. It has a nice, huge piece of land in the back. So I can have 50 employees and we can all park there. Um, when she benefits, the community benefits. You know, she's got 30 employees that work with her every, every single day that are you know, um, you know, want, needing to take care of their family. So when she's able to grow her, her business, uh, her employees are able to grow with her. The entrepreneurs are some of the most courageous people you know, on the planet in that they take that leap of faith into uh, doing their own thing and, and, and being able to provide revenue to take care of their families, to, to be able to uh, do some of the things that they want to do. Usually they say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a business. I see now there are companies and banks that want to help. 